Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hello, everyone. So welcome back to Impact Weekly. New question coming in. So basically, should we charge our customers for customer success? Hmm. Okay. That's a big question. Comes up it frequently. It sure is. Actually. Oh yeah. No, I think um, I think there's a lot to it, and uh, I think it's actually it's going to bring us back to the the philosophy behind customer success eventually here. But so if we can imagine a few few reasons for asking this question, and I think in general this this is more common in a in a more enterprise or complex product uh, environment uh, where you mm-hmm. you actually do a, you're probably doing quite a lot of work uh, with your customers for your customers and uh, and this is where you I, I think sometimes the, the case might be that you've been everybody is drained with uh, things that you're doing for the customer and um, you, you kind of want to recoup some uh, some some money from 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 this uh, right, all this work right. you're doing right yeah i mean i think you know when we look at like sort of interaction models we could kind of break them down into three different types um you know there's sort of the self service there's things that, that we would say are are done with you so that you know that we're doing stuff with the customer and then there's done for yeah. you which is where yes. you know now we're doing the, the actual work for the customer and i think if you're doing a lot of the stuff on the on the the done for you side you're absolutely right i mean there there's there's a cost to doing that um mm. but you know th- at at a higher level the question is are those things customer success or is that professional services. Um, so, you know, yes. the, now there's a, what's the distinction here? Um, and, and, you know, I think also to, to your point about recouping costs, this question mm-hmm. also often comes from a place of, am I looking at customer success management, the, the, you know, the actual operationalization of customer success in my company? Am I looking at, looking at that as a cost center? So, yeah something that I want to, you know, reduce the cost of recoup the cost of, and, and, you know, it's, it's something that I have to have. It's not Mm. really something that I want to do, you know, or am I looking at this as, as a profit center or, or something that's going to lead to the growth of my customer. And, you know, like we, like we talk about all the time, you if customer success should, should lead to done right, should lead to customers staying longer buying more from you, increasing their spend over that increased life, lifetime, and then yep. getting them to advocate for you, to, to, you know, to spread the good word. Those things together, I mean, that can yeah. lead to exponential expansion in account value, and it can lead to reduced customer acquisition cost and you know, all that stuff. If that's how you're looking at it, that, I think that changes uh, you know, the calculus on whether or not you yes. need to charge for things. But if you're looking at it as we need to just reduce cost or otherwise get back what we put into this, then, yeah, you know, then this question makes, makes more sense. So I think we have to understand where people are coming from on that as well. Definitely. I think that's a huge point. I think, uh, yeah, that's that. And that's really a f- philosophy, philosophy or a way of looking at things. And, uh, and as you said, like it, it's, if you look at customer success the right way here, I mean, it's not about minimizing cost. It's about uh, it's about uh, growing your customers uh, and uh, helping them achieve all the success they can with you, and that's a huge thing, of course. But but let's uh, let's also let's look at this question in a few different ways, because if even if you say that you you agree with us here, uh, customer success, we shouldn't charge for it. We should do customer success. It's important. It's strategic. It's going to bring us where we want to go. Uh, what, what what can happen? I, I know myself that sometimes when you 
when you when you offer unlimited customer success, that might uh, fire back at you as well. Um, I, I've seen sometimes uh, we used to offer free onboarding, and some customers they didn't appreciate that. They they used all our resources, and we spent endless hours with them without really without really doing much for them really i mean uh, so i think there's uh, there's some balance here to this question that we should address as well yeah i mean i think there's 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 a lot going on there you know i think the first one first thing to just take a look at is um putting a value on things um yeah. you know can can really help so i mean you know whether it's whether we're talking about customer success management or we're talking about professional services or or any any whatever any other other services um, yeah. that we can offer a customer that's going to help them you know increase their usage or or you know increase the depth of usage and get into the sticky features mm. and and yeah. whatnot land and expand all of those things if if we can throw in services to help them do that you know either as part of the sales cycle to you know instead of discounting our core product we we throw in some professional services or we just we just gift them some, some hours later on yeah. to help them, you know, use more of our core product. That's, that's fine. But to your point, mm. we want to make sure that they understand two things. One, if we're going to give you 10 hours of onboarding time or implementation yeah. time or whatever, um, that, that has a value of, you know, $15,000 or whatever. Um, and if you exceed that 10 mm. hours, then we're going to charge you some, you know, some hourly rate, maybe it's a discounted yeah. hourly rate, but, you know, just being very clear about that upfront, I think is, is, is important, but putting yeah. a value on something, even if you're giving it to them for free, I think is really, um, really critical, yeah. but, you know, I, and, and then just communicating just overall, like, you know, here's the value, not just the, the, the monetary value that you're getting, but you're getting this, this additional value, but it does come back to kind of a, a, separation of, of, of church and state here, uh, is, mm. you know, at what, yeah. what is implementation versus what is onboarding? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I don't, you know, this is another one of those aspects of customer success and, and just customer engagement that doesn't have a definitive answer. You know, um, implementation is what technically, or, you know, generally mm. technical it's, it's generally functional, um, mm. it's customization, all of that stuff it often has to happen at least to some degree before you can have people from the customer company, you know, actually logging in and doing any work. Yeah. So it kind of comes before onboarding. It can often happen mm. either before and then during onboarding, but you know, this is, this is where things get more complex because it's not everything. There's very often it, not a just straightforward answer yeah. Is implementation onboarding, and if not, do we charge for implementation, but we don't charge for onboarding? You know, um, mm. yeah. <laughs> so it's it's yeah. I don't think we're I don't think we're at doing anything but sort of muddying the water here, but it's it's something you have to understand within your company. And I think really what you have to do yeah. is understand that there is no, um, there's no like right way to do this that just that works for everybody. You're going to have to no. take into consideration how this should be applied in your mm. unique relationship with your customers in your unique situation. Yeah. Um, and, and I think having professional services, we call it that, if you consultancy or whatever you want, prefer to call it, I think it's a great way to, um, because it's, it's also, it's, it's very important that both internally and, and with the customer, to be clear what what is what here and um, even if you're a small team you might have different you, you might be both the customer success manager and the professional service person uh, but it's still very important to separate those things that like you mentioned if we do things for the customer we should most likely charge for that but when we help them as with our customer success hat on uh, we should not charge for that and that can be really hard if you're if you're in this if you're just doing both, right? We have uh, to remember to take yeah to, to switch hats. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, 
I mean, we, we do, you know, we talk about the same thing with support and, and customer success and sort of when to, you know, if you're very early, early stage, either in an early stage company or just early stage um, in, in your customer success journey inside the company, you know, at what point do you separate support from customer success? And we say, well, ideally from day one, you just at least have a generic success in or support inbox that, yeah. even, you know, even if it's just you as the, the sole CSM, you know, you're working support tickets behind the scenes, mm. you're still separating that out from the customer standpoint. And the same thing could happen uh, with professional services. You have a, a professional services team that's sort of, you know, behind a generic inbox or a, a mm. pseudonym <laughs> or something. Yeah. And, and you as the CSM are, are, you know, sort of delegating work to this, this other entity that just happens to be you behind the scenes. You, yeah. you do that for several reasons. One, because it just, it does create separation of, of sort of, mm. um, uh, you know, who, uh, of sort of what department is responsible for certain things. Um, yes. And, and you set the customer up sort of, you're positioning things appropriately for a longer term when you do have other people, you know, you bring on a professional services person and you bring in support people and you bring yeah. in other CSMs. And now that those separation of, of duties um, are already well defined. You don't have to go back now and, and sort of try to rework it. So, you know, that's I think that's that's an that's a it's a very interesting. Um, and we always talk about that with 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 support. It's yeah. very interesting that you bring that up from a professional uh, professional services standpoint. Yeah, and I think also professional services is sometimes as a SaaS business you you don't you you're reluctant to have. A services part, a consultancy part, because you're a SaaS company and you know everything is about the recurring revenue and the licenses and so on. But from my experience, I think we share that, Lincoln, is that professional services can be really uh, a great way to also accelerate uh, the value your customers will get from your your SaaS platform. And uh, so it's it's many good ways. If, if you are thinking about charging for something, I think professional services is what is, is, is to answer. Right. I think so, you know, and, and we're, what we're saying for professional services here is really just anything that we're going to do for you sort of behind the scenes. Um, yeah. and, and yeah, I mean, look, we can accelerate your path to success. We can, we can do more integrations and, and customizations. That's only going to sort of bring you deeper into the product, um, mm -hmm. have more lock in, but you know, in a, in a positive way. Um, there's, that's, that's all really good stuff that leads to positive outcomes for, for everybody, hopefully. Um, yeah. and yeah, I mean, I think, um, that makes total sense. I think, you know, if we just kind of go back to the, the, the big idea here, um, mm -hmm. we talk about customer success as an operating philosophy. So I think from that standpoint, we say everybody gets customer success. Yes. Like everybody like we, we just need to build that in whatever that means within the confines of your unique situation. But, but essentially we want to make sure everybody is, is set up for success. Um, mm -hmm. All of your customers have whatever they need to be successful, but some customers can, can pay to sort of accelerate that success. They can, um, they can pay, you know, for a, a different experience where their, their, their most common appropriate experience may be more asynchronous engagement for whatever reason, they want more synchronous engagement, they can pay for that, right? So, we're, but everybody gets customer success yes. at a fundamental level, but some people will be willing to pay for that. The other thing to remember is when we're talking about this, nothing is monolithic and just like, you know, one way to look at it, this, things, things change across the life cycle. So a customer may come in and opt to pay extra for accelerated mm. onboarding. So just during that one phase of the life cycle, they want to pay for accelerated mm -hmm. onboarding, but then they'll go back yeah. to sort of self-service or they'll go back to, you know, more asynchronous engagement. But then a project comes up, a new goal comes up that they want to, you know, that they need to meet. Maybe they have a tight deadline. Now they want to pay, you know, maybe for some additional uh, professional services or just some more synchronous time with their CSM. Um, yeah. You know, that's something that the, that they could do. So everybody gets customer success, but some people may, may want a little bit more and we can offer that yeah. to them for a fee. And I think that that's totally 
legitimate and totally fair. Fully agree. And I think, I think also uh, to, to wrap this up and uh, to, to put the final word here is that I think it's when, when you discuss this and when you have a question around this, I think it's usually because it's not very clear internally and then it's not going to be clear how it works with the customer. Mm-hmm. And that's where you end, when you end up in gray zone. So if you clarify things, customer success is for all our customers. Mm-hmm. It's strategic. It's a key for us. But we want to have services that we can offer to accelerate and to to actually uh, br- bring the customer f- forward faster. I think that's that's great to do as well. Uh, but you need to be very clear on how this works internally, because then it's going to work externally with your customers as well. So I would say that's the that's the final uh, advice here uh, to to wrap this question up. Uh, I mean, that was, that's beautiful. That was very well said. That's exactly it. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.